So it's been about three years since Apple released the M1 and every time since then when you blink they release a newer, better and faster chip and every YouTuber on the surface of the planet makes a video about it. This leaves you wondering, is the M1 still worth it? I have owned both the M1 MacBook Air and Pro and in my workflow as a music producer, DJ and guy who makes videos on the internet, I have not seen a difference between the two that's worth choosing the Pro over the Air. While recording this video, I'm gonna be using the Pro, but I'm gonna be talking about the Air because it's so much better value for money than this. With Apple releasing multiple chips in a year and there are thousands of videos showing how better they are compared to the previous gen, it is very easy to always want the latest and greatest, forgetting just how powerful your current machine is. It is not the intention of every tech YouTuber to make us feel or think this way but they do. And no one is making videos about every update there is on the Intel and AMD side so on that side of the world it is very normal for people to buy a laptop or PC and use it for 5 plus years without feeling the need to upgrade with every new release. When the M1 MacBook Air came out the situation was very awkward for the competition especially the previous Macs with Intel CPUs. Cause from a music production point of view depending on your workflow the M1 MacBook Air is just as good as the most powerful Intel MacBook ever made, the 2019 i9 16 inch MacBook Pro. Keep in mind that that machine sold at $4,000 at launch while the Air was triple nine and now it's even lower. And I know that I'm comparing it to an older machine but it's not like that machine is now obsolete, it's still the powerhouse that it was at release. In fact, a while back I was invited to Universal Music Studios and saw that they used an even older Mac. It was one of those Mac Pros that came even before the cheese grater, further proving my point about upgrades. Behind me I have a gaming PC with the following specs, you can pause if you want to see them, and I use that machine for music production and video editing, pretty much the exact things that I use this MacBook for. And this PC is not top of the range or anything, but it is definitely overkill for music production, especially for the type of music that I make. So naturally I just had to put the two head to head without anything else running in the background. With one of my projects where I have a lot of third party plugins running, the M1 outperforms the gaming PC by a hair. They are both under 30% CPU usage but the PC is slightly higher. Actually after doing multiple tests, it turns out that the M1 was way better than the PC, running at below 20% so yeah. I then opened a project where it's just stock plugins running but I don't have a lot of those in my work so I turned to one of those demo projects that come with FL Studio. Now this is where things took a more expected turn. The PC completely obliterated the M1. It was running at around 15% CPU usage while the M1 ran at around 35%. I think it might be optimization issues but still. But I need you to keep in mind that my previous laptop with a 5th gen i5 could not run the first project without stuttering. I have struggled to get both of these machines to 50%. The only way I can max them out is if my goal is to do so and not actually make music the way that I normally would. Did I mention that the M1 does all of this while running completely silent and using a fraction of the power? In contrast, the PC sounds like this. Also keep in mind that I make dance music and if you make a different type of music, your experience with this laptop might be different. For instance, if you make orchestral music, your bottleneck will probably be the RAM and storage before you could even think about the CPU. Now what about the M2, M3 and all the Pros, Maxes and Ultras? Well truthfully, they are all better than the M1. In fact, when you watch those comparison videos, you might even start to believe that the M1 is a weak CPU. That is until you realize that the difference between the M1, M2 and M3 is only marginal. It's like the difference between the iPhone 14 and 15. There are things that you can do better and slightly faster, but it doesn't mean that you can't do them at all. And then when it comes to the pros, maxes and ultras, they benefit video editors way more than music producers. They are better, don't get me wrong, but it's not day and night. Let me put it this way, anyone who absolutely needs an M3 Max for music production, already knows that. They are already maxing out every computer they get their hands on and they don't want to be on Windows for whatever reason. Either that or they have a lot of disposable income. For the majority of us, it's like driving a tank to fetch your kids from daycare. It's, it's overkill. If you're coming from an older Intel and you want to upgrade to a newer machine, then yeah, of course, get the M3. But if you don't have the money, getting a used M1 Air or Mac Mini for $500 or less gives you way more value for money than anything you can think of. And if you already have an M1 machine and you're not mixing it out, save your money. You don't need to upgrade. To watch whatever video YouTube thinks you might like to see, click here and I'll see you there. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace.